You can start, sir. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. This is Ranganathan again, back with you all, uh, starting uh, the first Saturday, July 2022. Uh, we are on team number 21, which is again an extension of what we did last week, the International Relations Part B. There are some very interesting and very rare uh, slides. <clears throat> Difficult to get slides, I'll show you. When it comes, we have that today in our presentation. Thank you all very much. Let's go. Okay. Japan had bilateral relations with Latin America. If you look at this list, there are almost 33 nations with whom Japan had maintained a good relations, especially in Latin America. One of the reasons is in the earlier days when Latin America wanted people to work in their farms, uh, many Japanese migrated into uh, Latin America. As a matter of fact, Peru even had a second generation Japanese as a president of Peru. Uh, of course, uh, he had a, a very rough political career and then uh, he had to be thrown out and now he is living in exile in Japan. Now, today I'm just showing you as an example, two stamps, one with Argentina and one with Brazil. You'll see the other. Uh, Brazil is the one that uh, published the crown prince and the princess visiting Japan, uh, visiting Brazil from Japan. And then of course, later on, they again visited when they became emperor and empress too. Now, with Argentina, there is a, just a bridge, but the bridge is very significant. We'll show you a photograph of that bridge as it is today. Now let's go to the next slide. Argentina's Japanese community numbers, something like 60,000, and many of them continue to preserve their cultural and traditions with the epicenter of their effort being a unique and tranquil Japanese garden, more than 50 years old, amidst the noise and traffic of Buenos Aires. Now you look at this picture, you can see the bridge what you saw in the stamp in this picture. In 1967, before the arrival of Argentina's Japan Crown Prince and Akihito and Crown Princess Michiko, the Japanese community began construction of the park. 30 years later, when the couple returned as Asian nations emperor and empress, it was expanded to its current three hectares. Uh, about 7.5 acres, making it the largest public Japanese garden outside Japan. That's why that bridge is there in the stamp just now you saw it. Now, 50th year of Japanese migration to Argentine. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, if you look at this, Japanese migration to Brazil officially began on June 18, 1908, when the ship Kasato Maru arrived in San Paulo, bringing about 780 farmers to the countryside of San Paulo. The flow ceased almost entirely in the late 1950s, with nearly two lakh Japanese settled in that country. Okay, so that's a ship you see in the thing and map of Brazil and the first day cover. Now let's see uh, some details on this. Now that's uh, Japan-Brazil year of exchange 2008, this stamp. If you look at uh, the top one, you can see one in the Brazilian uh, thing, another one is uh, in the Japanese. Today, Brazil has got such an impact that especially during some summer, you can see the streets in Asakusa uh, filled up with the samba dancers from Brazil and Latinos who come and dance for the uh, historic and uh, rhythmic 
beat of the Latino beat, and many Japanese and visitors also joined them in the dance. You can see the ship that brought the Japanese into Brazil. Okay, and then the 2008 they celebrated Japan Brazil Year of Exchange, and uh, you can see on the top two slides uh, you can see coffee beans. Brazil is very famous for its coffee, Brazilian coffee. And then Jesus Christ statue, which is very famous on top. And uh, down below is uh, the butterfly and the chukan, which are very famous again in the Latino side and Brazil. Brazil-Japan relations refers to current international relations between Japan and Brazil. The diplomatic relations were officially established on 5th November 19, 1895, with a Treaty of Friendship, Commerce, and Navigation signed in Paris. Early relations were dominated by Japanese migra immigration issues. The total number of Japanese migrants reached 1,90,000 in the pre-World War II period. Now more than 2 million Brazilians are of Japanese descent, making Brazil host to the largest Japanese community outside Japan. At the same time, Japan is to host a third largest Brazilian population, most being the, of Japanese origin. Both nations are members of the G4 nations, G20, and the World Trade Organization. Now, if you see, again, you have some more Latino countries, Japan, Mexico, and Paraguay. If you see, Japan-Mexico relations refers to the diplomatic relations between Japan and Mexico. Both nations are members of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, CPTPP, a G20 major economic organization for economic cooperation development and the United Nations. And uh, if you see, uh, this is a Brazilian uh, flag, which is also down below. You can see that it is uh, the 60 and stamp that you see is um, uh, this, it's a Mexican uh, thing, and the first there was a first equal treaty that recognized the sovereignty of Japan, whereas it is the first treaty of Mexico with a Japanese uh, Asian country outside the the uh, Latino uh, sphere. Now, if you see, uh, this typically shows the Mexican flag. Uh, and also it is seen that uh, uh, the, in Mexico, the stamp is issued on August 16th, showing um, yeah, half of the chrysanthemum symbol and the Japanese symbol that is issued in uh, uh, Mexico. But unfortunately, that's not the stamp uh, that I have, but I have uh, five Saturn and stamps of uh, Issued at uh, Brazil, uh, uh, issued at Brazil, uh, for the uh, at Mexico, for the relationship that is there. Now Paraguay has issued a souvenir sheet and diplomatic relations between two countries established in 1919. Immigration from Japan commer commenced in 1936, and an immigration agreement concluded 1959. The sixth anniversary of the Japanese immigration was celebrated in 1996 with the attendance of Dio Kaizawa, the member of the House of Representatives. Whereas, if you see, Japan Mexico was signed uh, uh, as November 30th, uh, 1888. Okay, so they have some age old relationship with these Latin countries. Then we have the diplomatic relations between Colombia and Japan. They were established in a treaty called Friendship, Commerce, and Navigation, signed in Washington, D.C. United States, uh, Washington, D.C. in the United States on May 25, 1908. However, the first official embassy was set up in uh, Japan, by Japan in uh, Bogota, Colombia in 1934. The following year, Colombia established its embassy in Tokyo. The relationship was officially established in 1908, only to be interrupted 1942 to 1954, the surge of World War II. The relations are mostly based on commercial trade that has favored the Japanese interests, cultural exchange, and technical and philanthropic aid to Colombia from Japan. 
another small country there is San Marino. So San Marino and Japan, they started the diplomatic relation in 1996. More, most of them, more or less, that is the period in which they're there. And then uh, Japan started the immigration to South America on April 3rd, 19, 1899, some nine years before the immigration to Brazil began. A group of 790 Japanese became the first immigrant to Peru to mark that even 1989. Peru designed, designated April 3rd the celebration of the Peruvian Japanese Friendship Day. In 1999, Japan celebrated centennial commemorative ceremony in Peru. Mr. Alberto Fujimori, a second generation Japanese, became the president in Peru. Later, later on, he was uh, thrown out of power and he had to take an asylum in some other country. Currently, he's in Japan, I understand, uh, living there. Now, Japan Cuba diplomatic relations started in 1829. Japan and Bolivia had a relationship, immigration from Japan commenced in 1819, more or less the same period you can see. An immigration, uh, an immigration agreement was concluded. In 1956, the centenary of the Japanese migrants celebrated in 1999 with the attendance of Princess Sayako and Tetsuo Yamashita, member of the House of Representatives and the representatives of nine prefectures. Then, Japan and Palau relation. Diplomatic relations between Japan and Palau was established in December 1994. Japan and the Republic of Palau have nurtured a cooperative, friendly relationship over the years. Japan is currently the second largest donor to Peru, the Palau, after the United States. There have been frequent visits by respective political leaders between the two countries. Uh, ties at local grassroots levels have also grown. The Republic of Palau have now sister arrangements with Yogo, and Mie prefectures in Japan have an exchange program of primary school pupils with the city of Takeda of Iwata prefecture. The country endowed with rich natural beauty attracts visitors from all over the world, including numerous Japanese tourists. <coughs> Japan and Australia relations. Uh, if you see the first day cover, the cover has got a Australian stamp and also Japanese stamp and stamped in both ends. Japan also signed, Japanese post office signed, and Australia also signed. <coughs> and you can see the Emeji Castle, the White Heron Castle of Emeji, and another historic place of uh, uh, Australia. They are there in the thing. Japan Australia relationship, the rapid development of Japanese. Relations with Australia and the post war era you know, was based on mutually cooperative uh, trade links. Since then, the relationship has expanded economic activities, politics, cultural, and uh, various other fields. As trusted partners in Asia Pacific, Asia Pacific region, Japan and Australia have a common interest in national stability and uh, prosperity. From September, First, 1996 through March 1998, Japan Australia held a series of events, the Japan Australia Friendship Anniversaries. So, commemorative significant milestone. Those are the stamps that you see. And 2008, the, it's called the Year of Exchange, uh, was celebrated. And um, Japan released a mini sheet. You can see the kangaroo and then the Sydney Opera House and this, um, the sea treasures, flowers, and the birds of uh, Australia exhibited. The stamp shell will be a unique <coughs> memento of the year of exchange, which works marks the 30th anniversary of the signing of the basic treaty of friendship and cooperation between Australia and Japan. Both countries are hosting an exciting large events, large number of events 
to celebrate the year of exchange and uh, interpret uh, an important milestone in the history of Australia Japan uh, relations. Now, this is again a stamp that is made for the Japan Australia long history and friendship. Japan concluded 1890. concluded uh, in 1869 the Treaty of Amity and Commerce, thus establishing diplomatic relations with Austria. With, with Austria. Diplomatic relations were resorted in July 1953 by exchange of uh, notes after having passed through a period of interruption during the Second World War. Both countries celebrated 140 years of establishment of diplomatic relations in 2009 and many events were <coughs> conducted and the stamp sheet was released on October 2009. Of course, Austria also released, uh, that is some, down the line, I'll show you that slide also. <coughs> in 2009, Japan and Austria are celebrating 140 years of diplomatic relations, which officially started in October 18, 1869. At that time, Australia was known as Astro Hungarian Empire. The commemorate this friendship here. A joint stamp issue was released from both the countries. The Australian, um, Austrian stamp will be shown a little later down the line. I place it at the end. Okay. Now, Japan Tonga and Japan Samoa has got a relationship. They're small Pacific islands, but uh, Japan has got very strong relationship. You can see. Most of the Japanese, especially university like Asia Pacific University uh, in Japan, they got a lot of students from especially the smaller uh, Pacific Islands. Uh, there's an interesting information I would like to share on that. Japan and Pacific Island countries have much deeper relations than is generally thought. Because this information is not uh, known to many people. And further strengthening these friendly relations through the dialogue with these countries at the summit level is highly significant. These countries are Japan's neighbors across the Pacific Ocean. They are friendly towards Japan and close partners who understand and support Japan's position in the United Nations other international arena. Japan has also deep historical ties with both these countries. Before World War II, Japan was granted a mandate to govern some islands by the League of Nations. And during the Pacific War, some islands became scenes of fierce battle. Today, there are many Japanese descendants living in these islands, for which Japan has governed. And a number of people still visit those battling grounds to collect bones of Japanese soldiers who died there to pay a tribute to their memory. And uh, these islands have got a great um, marine resources. The Pacific Island countries have extremely huge external exclusive economic zones, despite the small, smallness of the national landmark, production areas and marine resources. And as you know, Japanese love fishes, anything marine, okay, they, are, they, they love to consume. Many Japanese fishing vessels are operating in this area as well. In Kiribati, there is a fishing training school operated with assistance from Japan Federation of Unito and Tuna, Tuna Fishing Cooperatives. Graduates work on board of the Japanese fishing vessels. There is great demand for timber products, which is being supplied from Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands and New Zealand. And they contribute, they account for the large number of uh, export to Japan, the wooden logs. The Pacific region is also an important route to transport products and natural resources to and fro from to Japan. Japan, Japan imports from Australia, Australia supplies half of iron ore, coal, and raw cotton that Japan imports, and Japan's exports to Australia and New Zealand pass through the sea area. Japan's official development assistance, ODA, to the Pacific Island countries amounted to approximately about 1.4 of Japan's bilateral ODA. This is almost 10 years before. Now it should be more. Japan is one of the largest donors of the, to this region and major has a major presence in this area. Now, this is a very interesting stamp, very rare to uh, get on hand. When Prime Minister Koizumi 
visited uh, North Korea because you all know North Korea has got very strained relationship with Japan, not only with Japan, with many countries. Uh, and then on uh, September 17, 2002, Prime Minister Koizumi visited North Korea and the summit meeting with Kim Jong Un, Chairman of the National Defense Commission of North Korea, and signed the Japan DPRK Pyongyang Declaration. And you would have never seen uh, this Japanese Prime Minister and uh, the North Korean uh, National Defense Commission Chairman together in any stamp. It's a very, very rare stamp. They both are signing the uh, North Korea uh, during the visit the declaration uh, seen from Pyongyang in a Japanese, in a North Korean stamp, and Japanese Prime Minister and Kim Jong too. They are seen together shaking hands. It's a very interesting and rare stamp, which I always value very much. Now, United Nations has come out with a number of stamps uh, on various countries. I've got uh, the stamps released by United Nations has got the country's uh, national flags as a part of their uh, UN stamp. You can see on the top, uh, it's a cover, uh, UN cover, which shows the uh, Indian flag and a lady in the Indian dress, so I put that. And down below is a Japanese stamp with a Japanese flag in a block of four, and a Japanese lady in the, their dress, and the map of Japan like what you see, India at the back of that lady. This has got nothing to do with the Japanese relationship. What I am saying is, Taj Mahal has been a great attraction to many countries which produce stamps. It has got some relevance to India. India and Venezuela have always enjoyed very cordial relations. There is similarity of views of major international political economic issues. Besides actually promoting bilateral relations, the two countries cooperate in multinational forums. These countries mark the 50th anniversary of establishing diplomatic relations, 1997. When this stamp was released, the huge uh, stamp, if you see the actual stamp is only where you see the Venezuela and the perforations marked. Now, the reason why I showed you is any country which wants to release a stamp in relation to India will always look at Taj Mahal as one of the prime object of the stamp. Taj Mahal is a favorite subject in Japan. Many Japanese come to India to see Taj Mahal and uh, Buddha Gaya in uh, North India. Okay. The, Japan, uh, the Taj Mahal is a favorite subject in Japan. And the stamp was released for 2002, 50th year of Japan-India diplomatic relations with Taj Mahal, which you will see in the next slide. Now, if you see uh, Japan, had a diplomatic relation with uh, four nations. One is India, another one is Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. It's a subcontinent. Out of three countries, it had a, a diplomatic relations for half a century when these stamps were released in 2002. Especially India, when uh, Japan signed the treaty, India didn't want to sign it along with other nations. It said, I have, we have a special space for uh, Japan. And so they signed a separate treaty in uh, San Francisco in 1952. So 2002 becomes a, a 50th year for Japan and their relationship. Now, Bangladesh became a country later. So this year also happens to be 2000, also happens to be the 30th year of Bangladesh. So Japan released a series of post stamps on April 12, 2002, calling it on Japan and South Asia in 21st century, indicating its establishment of diplomatic relations with India, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka for 50 years, and Bangladesh for 30 years. You see, Taj Mahal is our uh, uh, symbol. Similarly, for Pakistan, the stamp shows Manjaro uh, area, and then uh, for Sri Lanka, Singaraya. And uh, the um, Indo Bangladesh is, uh, uh, what is this uh, thing? Buddhist Vihara of uh, Pahapur in Bangladesh. 
This is the four uh, series of stamps that were released for the diplomatic relations with four nations in South Asia. Now, India, in return, released one of the best stamps India has ever produced. It shows Kathakali Indian dance, and very similar to that is the Kabuki. So it had a sheet, which has got both horizontal and vertical satanans, and also a souvenir sheet. And uh, uh, you can also take them as certain and stamps by themselves or a full sheet by themselves, which were still in great demand. And this has got a award also from the Indian Postal Department as one of the best designs that the Indian stamps have produced. Now, that's uh, Taj Mahal. If you look at the uh, Taj Mahal itself, on the entrance, you'll see uh, on the marble, you've got some designs made. The same designs have been produced as a background for this Taj Mahal at the back. You can see those designs. And then, like what we have released, a stamp collaborating Japan and uh, India. Similarly, Sri Lanka produced a stamp with their flags, Sri Lanka and Japan, and Mount Fuji there. That is there seen on the uh, first day cover. And uh, Pakistan and uh, Japan shared a good relationship for a long time. And Pakistan was one of the greatest suppliers of cotton to Japan. So, and uh, in Japan, in turn, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Japan, in turn, supported uh, Pakistan's textile industry, supplying spindles, everything. And uh, Pakistan also has got a beautiful tunnel. <coughs> sorry. As a tunnel, you can see at the stamp at the uh, four stamps, you can see in the black of four at the right hand side corner, that tunnel was a contribution of um, Japan to Pakistan's economy. So Pakistan has did the, these things as the stamps, reciprocal stamps for the 2002 stamp made by Japan. And uh, of course, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Bangladesh, use the Kyoto's Kinkakuji as their uh, stamp uh, for the 2002. You can see the black of four and a single stamp given by Bangladesh for their 50th, the 30th year of diplomatic relation. Then 2007 was declared as the India-Japan friendship year. And if you look at them, um, this is a stamp sheet that is a mini sheet that is released by Japan. So again, you see Taj Mahal will be a part of that. And then Taj Mahal with the camel. Uh, then the Indian tiger, which is very famous. And um, you can see the Ranchi. All, all, all things connected to India. At the beginning of the 21st century, Japan and India, they start to take their bilateral relationship quantitatively to a new level. Uh, the foundation for this was laid when uh, Yoshihiro Mori, the then Prime Minister of Japan, and Mr. Atul Bihari Vajpayee, Prime Minister of India, signed during the former Japanese Prime Minister's in landmark visit to India in 2000, a global partnership of the 21st century. The year 2002 will be the 50th year, and 2007 was considered as a year of friendship. And it was on the December 14, 2006, jointly launched Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and his Japanese counterpart, Shinto Abe, uh, a colorful uh, ceremony in Tokyo. And uh, uh, Abe-san was invited to be the chief guest to the first Indian Republic Day. Chief guest from outside was Prime Minister Abe of Japan. The year 2007 is a friendship year of Japan and India, who set up a series of events, intercultural uh, knowledge and other exchanges between the two countries. Now, our current Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Modi and uh, Abe San, during the last visit, they signed an agreement for promoting Japanese language in uh, India because uh, as you all know, Japan is going through an acute uh, manpower shortage because uh, uh, 
uh, elder people who are around 80s and 90s are living longer. There's no younger replacement generation coming up. And many women are not giving birth. There are so many issues on the demographic side. And so Japan, which has been having a very strict one, one country, one race, okay, it was, you know, Minzuku, as today is changing, is inviting people. But of course, there are a lot of restrictions. But you will find Japan is going to look like a mixed race country now. Uh, so before they come, at least they should know the Japanese language, what they have to do and converse, uh, live comfortably in Japan and make the Japanese who are already living there comfortable also. Okay. Because uh, Japan is a very peaceful country, no theft, nothing. And with so many people coming from outside and with all the economic constraints they may have, there, there, are, there can be issues, but still. 2007 was uh, Japan-India friendship year. Japanese release, unfortunately, Indian Postal Department missed the opportunity to release a set of stamps on that time. Now, International Friendship Exchange uh, year uh, stamp, if you see the postage stamps issue and the theme, International Exchange and Friendship, depict the winning five designs at the the Japanese Postal Department, certain occasions, they'll always invite uh, designs, not from their design department, from outsiders, from the public, from children, all that. So the designs, C2001 and C2001, the, you can see them A and B there on the top or from the junior section, while the others, okay, are from the general section. The 2008 says, let us start. B is, I'm glad I have met you. Uh, and then C is, with all my heart and my favorite dog and bear is a D. And E, we are all friends. So that is a theme that they are reflecting in their sample, which is done by people who competed in this. Now, we also have what you call a joint issue. If you see a joint issue, two countries together on a particular occasion, they release a joint issue. See, uh, the stamps is a joint issue, more or less, more or less, they share the same stamps or a few stamps are the same in both the things. The main uh, one half a page of theme or something, maybe different reflecting the company's thing. This is a Singapore, Japan, if you see, the Singapore line is there on that side. Japan will have something else instead of that. But if you see, uh, this shows uh, Singapore is very famous for its orchids. So the top shows orchids. And then uh, if you see uh, the top or five ends, the bottom is uh, eight ends, which is, uh, which is taken the tip, flowers and birds. For the four seasons is what is there for the bottom two. There is 80 ends. The top 50 ends are representing the flowers of Singapore. Um, this is the greeting stamp that is greetings international joint issue on 3rd October 2006. This was released. If you look at the second stamp, this is a stamp Singapore has released. You see the middle, the 10 stamps which are there. Okay, uh, that is four plus two, but actually. Uh, they are also uh, the uh, one big stamp equivalent to two stamps. So if you see that is equivalent to almost eight single stamps. Now the sales, the stamps are the same like what you see the previous one. See the stamps here are the same here, but only the theme stamp is uh, different. Uh, now uh, Singapore has put uh, their uh, beautiful orchids here and the Japanese uh, tree and then uh, uh, their flower. So Japan-Singapore relations was refers to bilateral relations between Japan and Singapore, two highly developed Asian countries who share historical, economic, and political ties. While the two countries first established bilateral relations in 1966, some of their earliest relations date back to even before the 15th century during the Muramachi period as well as uh, 
the Ryukyu Kingdom, which is the Okinawa now. <coughs> now, Japan Thailand relations refers to bilateral relations between Japan and Thailand. Contacts that uh, nearly start with the Japanese trade on Red Seal ships and the installation of Japanese communities in Siamese soil only to be broken off with the Japan's period of seclusion. You know, during the uh, Edo government, uh, we had a period of seclusion. Now, contacts resumed in the 19th century, that is after uh, uh, the Edo government was gone and then uh, Meiji era started, uh, it become more and more uh, opening, uh, opened itself to the other countries. Contacts resumed in the 19th century and developed to the point where Japan is today one of Thailand's foremost economic partners. Thailand and Japan share the distinct distinction of never having lost sovereignty to the European powers during the colonial period. And both countries were Axis partners during the World War II. This again another uh, uh, stamp from Thailand, but the uh, same uh, this thing if you see this is a bilateral stamp that is issued uh, from uh, Japan. If you see this all Nippon stamp and it shows the uh, Thailand uh, Buddhist pagoda. Here this is a stamp which is released by Thailand. It shows Mount Fuji and the Sakura on one side, but the other stamps are major. Are the stamps? Few stamps are, are of course changed. Now, Canada and Japan, their uh, joint issue, Annie of uh, Green Gables, is a well known novel originally from Canada, which is also very popular in Japan. The stamp sheet issued to commemorate the centennial of the novel. This is the first Japan Canada joint issue and stamps are designed in both countries. See, this is a Japan uh, stamp. If you see this stamp is a greeting international. When they say greeting, it's there. This stamp was designed in Japan. The details are given here. And then if you see the next stamp, that is a stamp by Canada. Of course, the theme is the same of the, the very popular novel. Bicentennial, the novel was sort of commemorated with the two of these uh, uh, joint uh, issues from both countries. Now, this is 50th, uh, the, this year is the 50th anniversary of the diplomatic relation between Japan and Indonesia. With this in regard, Japan Post and uh, POS Indonesia, Postal Services of Indonesia launched the first joint issue. The stamps depict respective scenery, plants, etc of the two countries. If you see this interestingly, uh, one sheet that Japan has released, of course you can see the temple of, that is there in Indonesia. But Indonesia released five sheets against one. If you see five sheets, and they all depict in Japan in different uh, things. So of course the pricing you can see it's the uh, thing. And uh, if you look at the Fishes, it is the same at the bottom. And uh, if you see these stamps are all the same. The first sheet, both the uh, sheets have got the same sum. Second sheet downwards is different. Of course, if you see another uh, three more sheets have been made by Indonesia. So that is the joint issues by Japan and Indonesia. Now, Hokkaido had a Toyoko Summit in 2008, okay? That's a G8 summit. <laughs> this took place in the 2008 at uh, Hokkaido. So now for that, a yeah, commemorative stamp was issued. Now it had members from the G8, core con country members, uh, eight of them, and uh, five United countries. Of course, India was one of the invited countries at that time nine limited invitees countries and six invited international institutions were called for this uh, G8 uh, summit at, uh, now after that, nearly uh, that summit was in 2008. In 2016, after eight years, okay, the G7 Hiseshima summit chaired by Shinzo Abe, Prime Minister of Japan, took place on May 26, 2017. 
the whole year the meeting was as follows. This is the first time Japan hosted a G7 summit in eight years since the Hokkaido Tokyo summit in 2008. Prime Minister Abe was there as the chair. Then President of the uh, United States, Barack Obama was there. French Republic uh, President, Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, Prime Minister of UK, Prime Minister of the Republic of Italy, Prime Minister of Canada, President of European Council, Mr. Tusk, Tusk, and the President of the European Commission. They were all there as a part of the G7. And uh, this is the ISE meeting, ISE Shima. They had the meeting. The special stamp was delivered. And a beautiful stamp has been released for this. Now, ISE Shima also had the 2016 same uh, this thing. So another stamp that is released, which is more projected on the uh, nature uh, the, the treasures of the sea, etc., compared to what uh, the first one showed and architectural buildings that are there. <laughs> Diplomatic relations established between Japan and Hungary reaches 140th anniversary in the year 2009. In addition, it attains 50th anniversary from diplomatic relations reopening. The commemorated number of uh, intercultural events is where between Japan and both countries. In addition, Japan Post issued jointly in both countries a sheet depicting the culture and growth of both the nations, which were released on 2009, October 16. You can see that's a, a stamp that was released by Japan, reflecting both uh, <coughs> Japan and Hungary. Okay. And that's a Sam by San, Mar San Marino. San Marino is again one of those Italian uh, country, uh, nation. It's, in, uh, it's a landlocked enclave, company surrounded by Italy. Uh, Sam's depict, uh, Sam's depict famous tourist spots, uh, a work of the Republic of San Marino. Sorry, it's not a part of Latino, maybe it's a part of Europe, I think, I'm sorry. That's my mistake. And then Japan and US signed a treaty of mutual cooperation security between both the countries, the United States and Japan, in the year 1960, on January 19. Strengthened Japan's ties in the West and during the Cold War era. A commemorative stamp was issued. Okay, for the 50th anniversary of the Japan-U.S. Mutual Cooperation Security Treaty. The signing of that treaty has been made as a stamp. And you can see uh, there are 10 stamps on this. Only the same two settlement stamps repeated in that uh, sheet. <clears throat> now, cherry trees were donated by Japan to USA and then Washington. Near the monument, your cherry trees everywhere. So the issue of uh, cherry trees, centenary of the gift of cherry trees to the USA was uh, shown. By, uh, it was commemorated with a one stamp sheet. And also you can see on a later date, another occasion, the Washington Monument is shown with a um, lot of cherry trees and the cherry blossom around that. So this is for the, of course, for the Japanese cherry is very important. So it is donated to uh, USA. If you go to Washington, you can still see it around the Washington Monument. Then this is Japan and Portugal are celebrating 150 years of diplomatic relations uh, in the year 2010. To commemorate the anniversary year, the stamps depict work of art from both countries, as well as old heritage sites and culture of Portugal. So that's a stamp that is there, which is the statue of patron saint. And if you see very interestingly, the patron saint stamp, Portugal. Portugal has been a, a seafarer's country. And therefore, you can see the statue carries a ship on the left hand. So that is speciality about this. And uh, you 
can see historic uh, connected architectural sites are also there at the part of this time. And Japan uh, had opened its door uh, after the, but before that, certain amount of some uh, trade was done at uh, uh, in um, Kyushu, uh, northern uh, side in the Nagasaki. So, uh, in order to, I mean, just to show that Japan was having a long uh, uh, trade using ship, ships with mass wind sails are shown here. So, you can see on the top also the second and pair is there where you can see both the uh, thing show masted ship with sails. So that's how the business was going on. Didn't so commemorate that 150th year. Um, this time sheet was released. The Japan's contribution to UN peacekeeping efforts, uh, commemoration of the 20th year was done in 2012. The 40th anniversary of normalization of Japan China diplomatic relations. So that's a 40th year stamp. And of course, uh, cherry blossom is a part of that. And uh, uh, another flower is Pesio. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I can't even pronounce it. Then Japan and Germany. If you see Japan and Germany, they had a long relationship. And then that's 150th anniversary of that relationship. This stamp was released on 2011, January 24th. And you can see a very beautiful stamp, um, horizontal format, and second and uh, pair of uh, stamps in there. And that's the thing. And then Sweden and Japan also had a long relationship. And therefore, uh, you can see 150th year of uh, Sweden and Japan relationship. The stamp sheet was released. Uh, that is done on 2018, August 2nd. It's again a mini sheet. Of course, offset lithography was uh, used. It's got 10 sheets of 82 years. Uh, I know last time I showed you that uh, 8 yen stamp became 82 years. That's one way of uh, adding tax. And then uh, you had uh, wait a minute 150 years of relationship with Belgium. Diplomatic relations between Japan and the Kingdom of Belgium is uh, shown. There were many sheep, and uh, you can see the settlement uh, stamp is there at the end. Then 150 years with the 139th year with Italy. And then Italy had a lot of beautiful paintings, so most of them finding a place here. 150th, uh, I'm sorry. It is 100, why I put 39th year, 150th anniversary of uh, with Italy. So there's some mistake, it's 150th year, and uh, you can see the beautiful Italian paintings as a part of the stamp. The stamp was released in 2016, uh, August 25th, and uh, again, offset lithography printing. And then its relationship with Denmark, 150 years relationship with Denmark. And you can uh, see uh, there's a small red board with the, uh, again, most of these countries also seafarers. You can see Tokyo, they're depicting. It's a very different way of uh, making the stamp. Of course, the stamp was released by Japan. So, uh, so it is done by designers in Japan. Now, there is also a relationship, 400 years anniversary of relations between Japan and Spain. 400th anniversary of Japan and Spain. You can see uh, 
the details of the stamps are uh, given here. I also do not know these places much, but the stamp is very beautiful. It has got uh, eight stamps and half a page where there is a certain end making it totally 10 stamps. And each single stamp is 26, uh, 28 by 13 millimeters. And, and this is the size of this thing is 25 by 35 millimeters. Uh, this time. Now, 50th year of relationship with Kenya, between Japan and Kenya. If you see uh, the Kenyan safari, finds the theme as a theme for the stamp that is released. Beautiful, and uh, all Japanese are animal lovers. They always love animals. So, very beautifully designed stamp, I would say. Uh, but this uh, Kenya and uh, Japanese like uh, uh, elephants very much. There's an African elephant there, the cheetah, the leopard is there, everything else is there. Then there is a diplomatic relation between Switzerland and Japan, 50 years. You can see the Swiss Alps there. And uh, Japan, if you see, there's also got Alps, the Japanese Alps are there where uh, people go for skiing and uh, the Winter Olympic Games are taken, taking place there. 150 years anniversary. This was released in 2004. You see, all these are very near 2004, 16, 18, something like that. And then, now, flowering dogwood trees from US, 1915 to 2015. In 1915 to 2015, one century of them. So, one century, these trees were brought from US to Japan. US gave, uh, uh, Japan gave them uh, cherry blossom, and then they gave in turn uh, dogwood trees. And then uh, the centenary of this dogwood tree was celebrated with this sheet of uh, stamp. Then, you know, Japan sends its uh, young uh, boys and girls who wish to go and do some voluntary work outside Japan as the, under the Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteer. These stamps are issued to commemorate the 50th anniversary of JICA, started Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteer program in 1965. The stamps depict local people and the Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteers at work, okay? They come and help them in education, hygiene, many things they do. And then the 50th anniversary of the normalization relations between Japan and Republic of Korea. That's South Korea, not the North Korea. Okay. These times are issued to commemorate the 50th anniversary of normalization Japan-Korea diplomatic relations. The representative flowers of both Japan, cherry blossom, in Korea, Rose of Sharon, and the two women wearing the national costumes, or each country, or the theme in this. Uh, and then the 50th anniversary of Singapore and Japan, okay, diplomatic relation in 2016. This is nothing to do with the other stem. This is purely a 50th year celebration of. Uh, diplomatic relations between Japan and Singapore. So earlier, what we have shown Singapore and Japan as a joint issue. This is a commemorative uh, issue. And then this is uh, the 50th year of uh, relationship between Japan and Maldives. Maldives is a small island, but Japan has got a strong relationship with them also. And uh, so this is a 50th year commemorative stamp sheet that is uh, released. Now, Austria, uh, earlier I showed you, Austria also had a joint issue at that time. We, what we saw was a joint issue done by Japan. Now, this is a joint issue released by Austria, Austria, uh, which I got a little later only. So the trade has taken a back seat before that. So I want to put it as 150 years of diplomatic relation it's a parallel issue, is what they call it. It's a same joint issue. 
a different stamp, Austria, Austria, Slovenia sheet with a single stamp representing yes, the ship SMS has been produced. Japan miniature sheet with 10 stamps representing topics uh, related to Austria. So you can see uh, when there is a thing, they have a joint issue, they show that. Again, scenes of life in uh, Finland is uh, being uh, there. So it is 100 years centenary of uh, relationship with Finland. Japan and Finland has got a, so therefore scenes of life in Finland they form part of the mini sheet, and uh, each stamp is 82 ends and 10 ends. Then, if you see, this stamp is the centenary of the National Labor, International Labor, ILO. This is an International Labor Organization, 100 years, because it's an International Labor Organization, therefore I brought it under the International Communication. This was released in 2019, uh, June 27th, almost. So it has got uh, different scenes, ships are there. The International Labor Organization helps in almost all the fields in which uh, people get trained and then contribute to the, each of their own country's uh, economy and uh, growth. So, thank you for joining us uh, today. This is about it. Next week, we'll have a new topic. Thank you all very much for being with me today. Sorry, in between, I sneezed twice. I'm sorry about it. Okay. I'm running a little cold. So, that's for the thing. My throat is also a little gone. Anyway, I'll shift all right. Okay, thank you.